Good morning, boys and girls. It's Mrs. Paddock. Today is Wednesday, April the 29th. I hope you're having a great day. Uh, today I'm going to read uh, a story, part of our butterfly collection of books, and it is called Fly, Monarch, Fly. Fly, Monarch, Fly. And a monarch is a type of butterfly, and they all look the same. They look like this, like orange and a kind of a yellowy orange. Um, so whenever you see a butterfly that looks like this, you can, you can say, hey, that's a monarch butterfly. This story was written and illustrated by Nancy Elizabeth Wallace. So she not only wrote the story, but she drew the pictures as well. Okay, hope you enjoy it. One blue sky day in late summer, mom and dad asked, who wants to go to Butterfly Place to visit the monarchs? Me, me, said Mina. Me, shouted Pip. They rode their bikes to Butterfly Place. The summer air smelled flower sweet. The late summer sun warmed them. They were greeted by the butterfly man. Hello, I'm Bert. Welcome to the butterfly place and the milkweed meadow. Hi, Bert, said Mina and Pip. It's a great day for an egg hunt, said Bert. An egg hunt, asked Mina, says here. Milkweed Meadow, welcome monarch butterflies. Save the milkweed, save the monarchs. Yes, let's go look for butterfly eggs, said Bert, and he handed them magnifying glasses. You'll need these because a female monarch's egg isn't much bigger than the head of a pin, and that's very small. Mina started singing, a hunting we will go, a hunting we will go. So it says here, female monarchs lay one egg. So just one egg. Hmm. Look, Mina, I'm an egg, shouted Pip. So see, he stuck his head into the little hole and that's what the egg looks like. And this is the egg stage and it lasts four to seven days, depending on the weather. See if you can find a tiny egg on the underside of these milkweed leaves, said Bert. So they lifted the leaves and they looked. Look, I found one, said Mina. It looks like a tiny igloo. Doesn't it look like a little igloo? Yeah, and that's what the eggs look like from Monarch Butterfly. It does, said Bert. The female butterfly looks for healthy, tender milkweed plants. She lays only one egg at a time. Guess how many eggs she lays all together? I know, I know, said Mina, more than 400. I read about that in my butterfly book. 400 eggs altogether, wow, that's crazy. Bert took a picture out of his big blue bag. When an egg is ready to hatch, a teeny tiny caterpillar nibbles a hole in the eggshell and it wriggles out. The eggshell is the teeny tiny caterpillar's first meal. Ew, said Mina. Sounds crunchy, said Dad. So this is a caterpillar that is hatching from that egg. Bert took a ruler with pictures on it out of his big blue bag. The teeny tiny caterpillar munches milkweed day and night with its very strong jaws, said Bert. And then it grows and grows and bigger and bigger, said Mina and Pip. So you see, it's tiny, 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 then it gets bigger, bigger, bigger. Mina read, milkweed leaves provide food and protection. Milkweed has poisons in it, but they don't actually hurt the caterpillar. But if another animal or bird tries to eat the caterpillar, the poisons make it taste terrible. The caterpillar's yellow, um, white, and black pattern tells predators to stay away because they don't taste good. Look, said Pip, now I'm a caterpillar. He's sticking his head through the little hole for the caterpillar. And I'm a bird who wants to eat you up, said Dad. Stay away, bird, stay away, Pip giggled. So this part is called larva stage, the caterpillar stage. And it lasts four to seven days, depending again on the weather. I found a caterpillar, said Mina. It's yellow and black and white. Do you see the long black antenna and or feelers on the head and the short antenna on the rear? So here's the, the long antenna on the head. And these are the short ones on the rear. Yes, said Mina. 
Near the head, do you see three pairs of small true legs to walk on? So there's little legs there. One, two, three, Mina counted. I see more legs uh, in back. They're stubby. So you see these ones here. Those are called claspers, said Bert. The caterpillar uses them to grip the leaves. Cool, said Mina. Bert looked in his big blue bag. Who wants to molt? Me, me, shouted Mina. Here, try this costume on, said Bert. Now you're a caterpillar, Mina, said Pip. A caterpillar eats and grows, said Bert, but its skin doesn't. When the caterpillar grows too big for its outer skin, the tight skin will split open and the caterpillar will wriggle, wriggle, wriggle right out. Underneath, there's new, larger skin. So shedding skin is called molting. The caterpillar usually molts about four times. Then what happens, Bert? asked Mina. Bert reached into his big blue bag and he pulled out a stuffed animal caterpillar. So you can see here. The fully grown caterpillar finds a safe place under a twig or a leaf and then it spins a silk pad using a special gland in its mouth called a spinneret. The caterpillar digs the tiny hooks on its rear end into the pad and it swings its head down. See if you can get the hooks into the white pad on this twig. We did it, yelled Mina and Pip. Bert took another uh, picture out of his blue, big blue bag. The caterpillar then sheds its skin for the last time. What happens next, Bert, asked Dad. Follow me, said Bert. So this is the caterpillar and it's shedding its skin. So you can see it's kind of changing here. But it's not a caterpillar anymore, said Bert. Now it's a chrysalis or a pupa. So this is the chrysalis or the pupa stage. I see a pip, uh, said Mina, and a tent. Let's go look. So here's a chrysalis. It's another word for uh, pupa, and it lasts five to 10 days. So now they're gonna go under the tent. Underneath the tent was a long table, and on the table, there were three glass aquariums with net tops. So one, two, three. Mina peered inside the first aquarium. And so she's gonna see a few things in there. Let's see. I see something that looks like a beautiful green jewel, said Mina. Bert said, that's a pupa. Amazing changes are happening inside. Mina looked in the second aquarium. Wow, I can see wings. Do you see the wings? Yeah. When she looked in the third aquarium, Mina shouted, a butterfly. And Bert shouted, the butterfly has worked very hard to wriggle its way out. Then it pumps blood into its damp, crumpled wings until they unfold. What happens next, Bert? asked Pip. The butterfly then rests in the sun for a few hours so that its wings will dry and they will harden. It's very important not to touch a butterfly until the wings have completely hardened, said Bert. Let's go out to the butterfly garden. Oh, I forgot to tell you, be on the lookout for Big Sweetie. Big Sweetie, shouted Mina and Pip. This is Big Sweetie, asked Mina. Nope, said Bert, but you're getting closer. She thinks that is, right? This is the adult stage, which is the butterfly stage, and it lasts seven to 10 days, or it could last seven to 10 months uh, if the adult migrates. Uh, now, we're over here, there's a little sign here. The poisons from eating milkweed in the larva caterpillar stage are still in the adult butterfly's body. The milkweed poisons now help to protect the butterfly. So if a bird takes a bite of a butterfly's wing, the poisons will make that bird sick. So here are the different uh, ways um, that it went from an egg to an adult. So it goes egg, then it went to a larva, to a pupa, to an adult. And this whole change is called metamorphosis. Metamorphosis, that's a big word, eh? It means it's changing. Mom and dad called Mina, Pip, Come over here. Mina stood very still and she whispered, the butterfly is drinking nectar. What's nectar, Mina? Whispered Pip. It's sweet flower juice. I read about it in my butterfly book. Can you see the proboscis? Asked Bert. It's like a built-in drinking straw. The butterfly drinks nectar with its proboscis. So it's like a big tongue or a straw. 
and it drinks all the nice liquid from inside the flowers. They watched. The proboscis curls up when the butterfly isn't drinking. Here, said Bert, a pretend proboscis for Mina and one for Pip. So if you've ever been to a birthday party, sometimes you blow on these and you go, Bruh! so that's kind of what they're using. And that's what a proboscis looks like. And then it drinks from the flower. Can I keep the party blower? I mean the proboscis, Bert, asked Mina. You sure can, said Bert. Let's keep strolling. Big sweetie, there it is. It's a sculpture, right? Dad read another sign. A butterfly's compound eyes are made up of lots of little eyes. Butterflies can see more colors than any other creature on earth. A butterfly smells with its feelers and it tastes with its feet. Mina and Pip put on wings. When the colder fall weather arrives, said Bert, millions of monarch butterflies will fly south to Mexico and Southern California. So if we look at a map, Canada is up here. This is the US and then they go to Mexico or Southern California. They spend their winter where it's warmer. This journey is called migration. We know about that, for example, Canada geese, they migrate to warmer places in the winter, right? Monarchs migrate thousands of miles. That's a long way for, to go for a butterfly, said Mina. How do monarchs know how to get there, Bert? Well, they use the wind to help them. Their antenna help them know how strong the wind is blowing and what direction it's coming from. Monarchs migrate farther than any other kind of butterfly. Mina and Pip gave back the wings. Oh, one more thing, said Bert. What if my last name was Erfly? Mina thought for a minute. Well, your name would be Bert Erfly. And they all laughed, laughed because it sounds like butterfly, Bert Erfly. We had a great time. Thanks, Bert. Bert said, I hope to see you soon again. And here's another joke. Why did the butter jump off the table? It wanted to be a butterfly. Ha ha ha. There's a, a puddle here and there's a rock, a beautiful uh, butterfly rock. And it has a bunch of stuff here too on the back, more about monarch butterflies. But one of the things that you can do at home is you can create your own butterfly garden and uh, have a few things like a shallow um, plate uh, where you put a little bit of water on there and the butterflies will come and drink the water from there. If you have a warm, if you have a rock, uh, the sun will heat up the rock and butterflies like to kind of land on those rocks. And then there's certain uh, flowers that uh, butterflies really like. Um, so for example, uh, Xenas. Uh, this one is black eye Susan. This is Phlox and Aster. So those ones, butterflies really like that. And the other big thing is milkweed um, uh, flowers or plants because uh, of course that's where they lay their eggs. Hope you enjoyed that and hope you learned a lot of stuff about um, monarch butterflies. Uh, we'll be reading a few more stories about butterflies uh, in the rest of the week uh, and hope you enjoy them. Have a great rest of the day. Love you, miss you, bye-bye.